welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Maria and I'm a third year medical student studying at the University of Cambridge. So today I want to continue my little series on preparing for the UCAT and really focus on what the main pitfalls are to avoid when you're preparing for the UCAT. Trust me, I'm guilty of a few of these and I really want to make sure you guys don't fall for these as well. Okay, so my top tip number one is do not spend money on expensive courses going to help you prepare for the UCAT. This isn't from my own personal experience, but a few of my friends did the CAT plan course and they found that it wasn't good value for money. Uh, often these courses are one to two days long and they'll cost something like 300 pounds. There are so many free resources out there that you should go to first. And if you want paid resources, Medify is a much better bet initially. Number two is not focusing on the really fast paced time nature of the UCAT. The UCAT is notoriously quick. Um, you've got only seconds per question and you need to target this in your revision from the very start. This is something I didn't do. So I mainly used this book at the start of my revision and I was doing questions quite slowly. Um, I think the trap I fell into is because the questions in this book are harder. And so I would spend more time. The thing is, I think most people would be able to do really well on this exam if there was sufficient time. And if you're not taking that into account from the start, you really need to. Point number three, which really relates to this is do this with an online format from the start as well. Using paper tests and books will only get you so far. You need to get comfortable with the whole interface um, and flagging things and using the online calculator. You need to get comfortable with the shortcuts for the calculator if you plan on using it. This is what it looks like and here are the main shortcuts that you can use. This is going to speed up the time you have and that is also going to be really helpful in reducing your own stress during the exam because you'll feel more prepared. Pitfall is not focusing hard enough on the situational judgment test. I talked about this in my first video, but the situational judgment is really important as a component of the exam. It's standalone and it's taken separately, so you can't really make up for it with other sections. You need to really try and make sure you get either a band one or a band two in the situational judgment. And this is going to come with a lot of practice and knowing what the main things to look out for are. There are some main rules that you should abide by. And I talk about this in my video, which goes through the UCAT section by section. Okay, the next pitfall is just this book in general. So this is the ISC Medical 1250 UK CAT questions. I bought this when I was applying because most of my friends did. Most of the online resources said I should. The thing is, this book is not a very good reflection of what the exam is going to be like. And for the UCAT, I think that's the most important thing. Structuring your revision and practice to target the exam. So what I found is that the questions here are a lot more difficult than what you tend to get in the actual exam. That really messes with your timings. And sure, even though it might seem like that's good preparation because you're gonna find the actual exam easier, I think you have to have an honest idea of how you're going to be doing and to be able to track your progress. You're not really going to be as prepared as you could be. Also, everything is on paper. It takes ages. It's not a really good reflection of the exam and it's a lot more difficult to track your own progress. So please, it's not really worth the money, try to avoid this. Okay, so the next one is a bit more personal to me, but it's about booking your exam. When I was applying for university, I was actually still kind of uncertain about um, whether I wanted to definitely do medicine and what medical schools I wanted to be applying to. So I, I was still very divided about whether I wanted to sit the UCAT. I had booked the UCAT for the very end of summer, so it was mid-September when I had it. It was a whole mess because um, I was really stressed out with personal statements and just launching straight into year 13, coursework for my history, 
and um, starting to think about the BMAT, like everything was compounding together. So what I recommend is doing it before you go back. I also recommend leaving enough time, but not too much time. So I would say leave three to four weeks. If there is a problem and you're really not performing well, you can extend this and pay slightly more money to rebook your slot. But I think if you leave too much time, you end up burning out. I talk about this in the first video and I have a nice graph in case you're wondering. The other big pitfall I want to talk about is taking the UCAT as the be all end all. Um, and I really want to move away from that. The UCAT is a part of your application. It's taken together with everything else your personal statement, your GCSEs, your A-level predictions, it's all taken holistically. Now, different medical schools will look at the UCAT differently and some of them will put a greater emphasis on the situational judgment test over others. I have friends who still got offers from medical schools with scores of less than 650 or less than 600. More importantly, you can be really strategic in where you apply to medical school because some medical schools will take people with much higher UCAT scores than others. And you really need to be aware of this when you're applying. I have a whole video dedicated to this, but there are also some fantastic resources from the Medic Portal, which really guided my decision of universities. You have to be honest with yourself and really realistic with the score you have. And I really want to go into a lot more detail on this, so if you do end up getting a slightly lower UCAT score, fear not, not all is lost. Personally, I think my biggest regret was actually getting Medify later. So I got it just a week and a half before my UCAT. And at this point I was actually abroad. So I was in Paris with my family and we were meant to be doing all these sightseeing things. And I was actually getting quite stressed because I only discovered how good Medify was as a resource and how much better I was getting, but I felt like this was quite late on. If I were you, I'd get Medify from the very start so I can track my progress. It's a really good resource. It really flags what's what you're doing wrong, your areas of weakness. That's my biggest pitfall that I fell for. This is specific to actual questions, but please do not spend too much time on a question. If you're stressing you out and you're struggling, just guess, flag, move on. Something else that happened in my exam is my first section went really poorly in verbal reasoning. Got really scared, I was really struggling, and this was reflected in my score. I ended up getting 590 in verbal reasoning. Then I kind of got into the zone and I realised that it didn't really matter how I had done it on this previous section. I just needed to move on and try to get the highest average I could. And I ended up doing that with the abstract reasoning where I got an 800 and that really helped to um, balance things out and bring some of my poorer sections up. So don't lose hope in the middle of the exam either. You can make up for it at any point. Okay, so there you have it. Those are my top pitfalls to avoid when you are doing the UCAT exam. I hope those were helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions or further tips, feel free to add those in in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hope it helped. Um, see you next time.